Shalom. All praises, honors, and glory to Yahweh, Ba'ashem, Yahweh, Shai, Ba'ashem, Rakar, Kodash. Double honors to my elders, the apostles of Great Millstone. Those are the men that taught me the truth of the Bible through the spirit and power of Yahweh, Ba'ashem, Yahweh, Shai. And Yahweh, Ba'ashem, Yahweh, Shai, Ba'ashem, Rakar, Kodash, Braka, Thumb. To the elect of Israel that scattered across the four corners of the globe. So what we're looking at here is an article from www.thewashingtonpost.com. And, um, you know, as we get into this article, as we read this article, what we're going to find out is how um, America is basically losing its grip on the world, uh, losing its, its world dominance, which is why I'm going to um, entitle this video or this lesson, Hegemony, the end of America's world dominance. OK, and um, basically this is what this article is going into, man. Right. And as a matter of fact, you know, since I brought up that word uh, hegemony, let's get a, a brief def definition on it, man. Uh, yep, it's right there, hegemony. So, you know, this is from Google definitions. It says hegemony, leadership or dom dominance, especially by one country or social group over others, all right? Then you've got the, the synonyms here. It says leadership, dominance, dominion, supremacy, authority, mastery, control, power, sway, rule, sovereignty, okay? So, you know, we read all these synonyms here and um, the scripture that should come to our mind is this here in, in the book of Job, man. You know, brothers know it, you know, the earth is given into the hand of the wicked, which is a foundation scripture for you, brothers, that's newly coming into the faith, into the ministry. Okay, this is Job chapter 9 verse 24, which proves who's in uh, power right now, who's got uh, hegemony in the earth. It says, the earth is given into the hand of the wicked. He covereth the faces of the judges thereof, if not, where and who is he? Okay, so let's just deal with the first line. It says, the earth is given into the hand of the wicked. So basically, the heavenly father, Yahweh, who you ignorantly call God or Jehovah, all right? And you ignorantly call his son, uh, Jesus Christ, who we know as Yahweh Shai, right? Those two entities have given the power, okay, to, to, to the wicked, man, right? Because when you go into that word, um, hand, in the Hebrew, it's yard, which means power. Right, and when you go into this um, this word "wicked" in the Hebrew, it's Russia I, okay. And the wicked of the Bible goes all the way back to Cain, man. Right, who Cain, you know, he was the first criminal, man. Okay, and that's what the word Russia I means, criminal or guilty one, right? And Cain was uh, was guilty of slaying his brother Abel, man. And Cain, you know, came back reincarnated as Esau Edom, if you can re receive it, man. Right, and Esau Edom, the wicked of the Bible. Right, became the progenitor of the Edomites, right? And the Edomites are you so-called white people, okay? That's who you are, man, the wicked. It says, he covereth the faces of the judges thereof. And who are the judges of the Bible? Okay, it begins with, again, who you ignorantly call God and Jesus Christ, right? Those are the judges, right? And, and, and their, their people, the Israelites. It says, he covereth the faces of the judges thereof. If not, where and who is he? And how did, you know, how did they cover the, the faces of the judges thereof? Okay, well, they done it by... Um, iconoclasm okay so they basically defaced the the real images of our lord okay and the the, the people of the lord right the children of israel and put up their own images man okay because when you read about the, the lord's image in the bible it's really talking about a so-called black man a man with woolly hair okay um skin like like dark bronze burnt in a in, in a furnace okay that describes a so-called black man a so-called negro man if you will okay and you don't see that in your churches. So the people that are mainly responsible for doing that, it only fits you so-called white people, man. No other nation, no other people, except for you Edomites, okay? It says, if not where and who is he? Yeah, if it's not the so-called white man, who else did it, all right? No one else did it, man, except for you so-called white people, all right? So well, now we can get into this article. It says, Trump has put America in the worst of all possible worlds, okay? It goes on to say, in retrospect, the era of American hegemony, now we know what uh, the word hegemony means, it means complete dominance. It says, in retrospect, the era of American hegemony, the moment of the sole power when the United States was the essential country was remarkably brief, all right? Which that reminds me of um, what our Lord and Savior said, Yahweh Shai, man, about how uh, he beheld Satan um, falling down from heaven, okay? Well, falling down from heaven as lightning, if, if I'm not mistaken. Let me see if I can find that. I believe that's in um, the book of Luke, chapter 10. Um, bear with me one second. 
I want to say um, the 18th verse. Yep, this is Luke 10 and 18. It says, And he said unto them, and this is our Lord Yahweh Shai speaking, I beheld Satan as lightning fall from heaven. Okay. Now, when you read about the Satan here in this particular scripture, it's not talking about the spiritual demon Satan. All right. It's talking about his physical counterparts, which comes in form of you Edomites. All right. You so called white people. Right. Because when you go into this word Satan or the name Satan, it simply means adversaries, all right? And you so-called white people, the Edomites, your adversaries unto Yahweh and his son Yahweh Shai and unto us Israelites, man, right? Our so-called blacks, Latinos and Native Americans. You are adverse to our ways, to our culture, to who we are as a people, man, okay? So it says, I beheld Satan, the Edomites, as lightning fall from heaven. And what's the nature of lightning? The, the nature of lightning is speed, okay? So in other words, Yahweh Shai saw these Edomites fall out of their rulership because that's what the, the heaven is speaking about, right? Them being in, in a, a position of power, uh, ruling. The, the Lord saw uh, Esau, Eden, begin with your elites, right? The Rothschilds, the, the DuPonts, the Oppenheimers. He saw you fall from your rulership like lightning, man. Okay, your brief rulership, as it said in that article, right? Which leads me to another scripture here in um, the book of Daniel, man. Right, because it's the heavenly father, Yahweh Bashmael Shai, that sets up kingdoms, man. Um... This is Daniel chapter uh, 2 verse 20. It says, Daniel answered and said, Blessed be the name of the Most High, which his name is Yahweh, and his son's name is Yahweh Shai, forever and ever. For wisdom and might are his. Verse 21. He changeth the times and the seasons. All right? And, you know, that's what the Lord is doing right now, changing the times and seasons. Like, I'll give you an example. You know, the, the time of so-called love and peace was, you know, that hippie era, man. Okay, the, the 60s, the 70s, right? But now we're living in an era of death, destruction, and war, man. Okay, we're, we're coming up to World War Three right now, man. So Yahweh Bashmah Shai is changing the times and seasons. And you can read more about that in what? The book of Ecclesiastes, the third chapter, right? About the, the times and seasons, okay? It says, he removeth kings and setteth up kings, all right? And that's what the Lord is doing right now, man. He's about to remove Esau, right? Esau, Edom, right? The, the wicked of the Bible, and he's about to set up his own king, man, right? His son, Yahweh Shai, our Lord and Savior, who you even call Jesus Christ. That's who he's about to set up, okay? And, and the Israelites, because it says in um, the book of Exodus, I want to say the 19th chapter, about how we're going to be a nation of kings and priests, all right? So that's what the Lord is about to do, man. He's about to set up the nation of Israel on, up on high. It says, he give wisdom unto the wise and knowledge to them that know understanding. And that's going to, to the elect, right? The elect of the, of the nation of Israel. Yahweh Bashmah Hashai has got a, a chosen remnant, right, of his people that he's uh, been merciful enough to, you know, bestow his wisdom, knowledge and understanding upon in these last days, man, okay? And that begins, in my opinion, that begins with the apostles and elders of Great Millstone, okay, and, and their elders. So going back into this article, I read it again, it says, In retrospect, the era of American hegemony, the moment of the sole superpower when the United States was the central country was remarkably brief. It began in 1991 with the collapse of the Soviet Union, probably peaked just before 9-11 and for the past decade under Presidents George W. Bush and Barack Obama, it has been drawing slowly and unevenly to an end, which, you know, should remind us of, uh, what's that? In 2nd Ezra chapter 6, from let's say verse 7 to verse 9, about how Esau, Edom, is the end of the world, okay, meaning you Edomites, you're, we're coming to the end of your rulership, okay, and Jacob pertaining to you so-called blacks, Latinos, and Native Americans, Jacob is the beginning that followeth, man, right, so after Esau goes down, us Israelites, us so-called blacks, Latinos, and Native Americans, we're gonna, we're gonna rule, right, we're gonna rule forever, man, right, as it says in Daniel, the, the second chapter and, and the 44th verse, right, the kingdom shall be left to any other, to any other nation, okay, so we're going to rule forever. But um, reading on it says, Even while it lasted, this hegemony was partly a game of smoke and mirrors. It depended on perceptions, okay? <laughs> Which reminds you of Esau's, you know, witchcraft and his, his deception, his lies, okay? Because that's how Esau has basically, you know, deceived the world, man, right? Through his smoke and mirrors. It says, Belief in American wealth, fear of American military power, uh, admiration of admiration for american values it depended on the absence of opponents the collapse of the soviet union uh, the relative weakness of china which that's all uh, turning around right now man because you know as we read 
Now let me get that real quick in um, Joel. Because right now, we're living in a time where these weaker nations such as China, North Korea, India, Pakistan, Iran, right now they're building up their military might um, to match America's military might, okay? So this is Joel chapter 3 verse 9. It says, Proclaim ye this among the Gentiles. Prepare war. Wake up the mighty men. Let all the men of war draw near. Let them come up. And that's what's taking place out there in the Middle East, all right? You're going to have various different nations, all right, real soon um, coming together out there to fight World War Three in the Middle East, man, all right? Armageddon, okay, the Mount of Troops, okay, out there in, in the Persian Gulf. That's where World War Three is going to take place, okay? It says... Um, verse 10 beat your plowshares into swords and your pruning hips into spears let the weak say i am strong okay and that's like i said right now you've got these weaker nations again such as iran china north korea uh, pakistan um india right even syria right now hey they're building up their military might to where you know they can actually you know fight against you know the, the beast nato and the eu okay america are being at the helm of that okay so Hey, man, things are speeding up, man. You know, I read that uh, last part again. It says, it depending on the absence of opponents, the collapse of the Soviet Union, the relative weakness of China, which, you know, that also reminds me of the book of uh, Ezekiel, the 38 chapter, about how the Heavenly Father, Yahweh Bashman al said he's going to put hooks into the jaws of, of Gog, okay? You know, Gog being uh, these Russian Edomites, right? And what it means by the Lord putting hooks into the jaws of um, uh, of Gog or, or Russia, and you know, you know, turning them back. That base, that's basically talking about how Yahweh Bashman is going to turn these Russians back into that mighty Soviet power, man, right? And draw them out to the Middle East, man, to fight World War Three. Because what do you do when you go out fishing? You put hooks, or you you catch fish with the hooks, man. So that's what Yahweh Bashman is going to do with the Russians, man. He's going to draw them out to the Middle East, right? This is um. You know the next paragraph it says above all it depended on an american willingness to invest in diplomacy in military power but above all in alliances okay and we're reading articles right now there's various different articles in the news right now where you know you got americans or america's a uh, allies they're starting to get frustrated with america man okay countries such as uh, france uh, germany they're starting to get frustrated with um, how america's doing business man Especially with what's going on out there in, in Syria, man. You know, the skirmishes between uh, Israel and Iran, right? You got, you got these uh, various different EU countries that are, they're completely fed up with America, man. Okay? So, um, reading on it says, By forging mutually uh, advantageous agreements with Germans or South Koreans, the United States had far greater influence than it would have had otherwise by, um, by creating and then expanding NATO. By maintaining troops in South Korea and Japan, the United States kept parts of Europe and Asia free to choose democracy and open for commerce and trade. Everywhere else, agreements and partnerships as well as money and, ar and armies gave the United States an outsized voice in trade and commerce as well as matters of war and peace. It says, President Trump knows no history and does not have any idea how the United States became an essential country, let alone a superpower, which we just read in the book of um, Daniel, the, the, the second chapter and the 21st verse, about how it's Yahweh Bashmah Shai that sets up kingdoms and puts down kingdoms, man. So, really and truly, who, who, set, who set up this so called white man? Who put him in rulership, man? It was Yahweh Bashmah Shai. It says, but he seems to believe that he can maintain that, that status and even increase in it. Okay, and that's, that's the pride of Esau Eden, man, thinking that. You know, he's going to rule forever, which, you know, leads me to my last scripture, you know, in, um, what's that, Psalms 49, okay? Because basically, these Edomites, their, their, um, their thought is that they're going to continue forever, man. And that's what it says here. This is Psalms 49, verse 11. It says, their inward thought is that their houses shall continue forever. Meaning what? They're going to continue ruling forever, man, okay? It says, and their dwelling places to all generations they call their lands after their own names, man, right? Again, talking about Esau, Edom, right? These Edomites. Their, their sentiment in, in this world is that they're going to rule forever, man, and no one's going to take them out of their, their power seat. But that's, that's the furthest, furthest thing from the truth, all right? Um, I'll read it one more time. It says, but he seems to believe that he can maintain that status 
and even increasing it without making investments, uh, diplomatic, military or monetary at all. This week, the outline of what this means, call it hegemony on the cheap, suddenly came into sharp focus. So basically, you know, I just found this uh, article pretty interesting and I thought it would be edifying for you brothers who, you know, read about, know about. You know, again, this is another article letting you know that we're coming to the end of this so-called white man's rulership, man. His power structure is, is crumbling and we're seeing it, you know, right before our very eyes, man. And that's why it says in, in um, what's that? Revelation, the 18th chapter about how Babylon is falling, is falling, man. Okay, because the Apostle John on the Isle of Patmos 2,000 years ago, around 96 AD, saw the fall of Babylon, man. And we're, we're basically living it out, man. That's what we're seeing in these various different articles uh, regarding, you know, America's downfall. Right, so Lord willing, this was edifying. I'm going to close out by giving all praises, honors, and glory to Yahweh, Bahashem Yahweh Shai, Bahashem Rakar Kwadash. Double honors to my elders, the apostles of Great Millstone, the men that taught me the truth, the truth of the Bible, and Yahweh Bahashem Yahweh Shai, Bahashem Rakar Kwadash, Brakatham, to the elect of Israel that's scattered across the four corners of the globe. Shalom.